Da, 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 da. It's a very small elephant, or a very big Steve. Or both. Or both. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Zoo Adventures this morning. Uh, I'm Steve in front of the camera today. Who's behind the camera today? Brett's behind the camera. Who's taking pictures way over there? Megan! Megan's also here with us today. Um, so we're going to take, we're taking you on some tours of the North Carolina Zoo. It is winter time. Not everybody wants to come and visit the zoo when it's cold and, and chilly. But we thought, you know what? We still want to share the zoo with you in case you want to come, at least virtually. We're happy that you're here. Your Zoo Adventures tour today is going to be elephants and the Watani grasslands. So stay tuned and we'll show you what we can show you. How you doing down there? So, as we mentioned, we'll be doing some tours of spaces, and this is uh, one that we really, really couldn't miss. These are elephants. We have several uh, different animals here. This is our kind of our north yard, so those of you who've been here before. It's kind of up the large pond is here, and you are looking at three of our awesome elephants, our enthusiastic elephants, our exciting elephants. African elephants. Or our African elephants, as Megan just reminded me. <laughs> so Brett's showing you, they're on the left-hand side, that's Cesar. And if you look really close, those of you that can see it, he actually has a stick in between his trunk and his tusk there. That must be hit, must be this the Cesar stick. And then back in the back, it looks like Nakanda in the middle, you think? Nakanda in the middle and Rafiki on the right. I agree. Nakanda doesn't have any tusks. Some elephants are born without them. Some lose them over time. But Rafiki was never born with tusks. And then Rafiki, I'm um, sorry, Nakanda was not born with tusks. Thank you very much, Megan. Megan's back going, Steve, Steve, that was Nakanda. <laughs> so yeah, Nakanda didn't have tusks and Rafiki lost one of hers. Um, so it just happens, you know, people lose teeth, animals lose teeth. And a tooth is, or a tusk is a modified tooth. This is what the tip of a tusk looks like. That's just the very tip of one. It's beautiful material. This is ivory. And ivory is a modified tooth. The tusk is a modified tooth. But it's like a super tool for the elephants. This is a digging tool, a knocking down tool, a status symbol. Um, a little bit of everything uh, the tusk is used for. And nobody needs a tusk more than an elephant. There's a really neat product called the Tagua Nut, and we talked about that in our gift shop episode a while back. The Tagua Nut is a nut of a palm tree, and it looks just like this, but it's sustainable. They're harvesting those nuts year after year after year. But that, you want to hold that? Thank you. Very Great job, digital friends. <laughs> oh, Brett, Brett took it away from me. So another thing that's kind of neat here, Brett, can you do me a favor? Can you uh, can you zoom in on one of those um, dirt pile? What, well, kind of dirt. How about one of the one of the one of the dung piles? Oh, Megan says fertilizer. One of the dung piles. Oh, Cesar's gonna give us a fresh one, maybe. Oh. He's on camera. Don't watch. He's on camera. It was very fresh. <laughs> little poop. Little poops. This is 10 o'clock in the morning. I guess we gotta be a little bit sensitive to our digital friends. I do see the dung piles. <laughs> that stuff's really important. A lot of animals um, rely on that in the wilds of Africa. And here at the North Carolina Zoo, we compost uh, a, a lot of that waste material and it turns into, fer turns into compost that we use in the, throughout the entire zoo. We use it in the aviary, use it in the desert, use it throughout the park, just as you might use compost. And this is what it looks like. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, I'm holding poop. <laughs> this has been shellacked and lacquered, essentially poop plastic. But if you look real close, <laughs> Brett's like, I want to see it. If you look real close, you can see the hay and the seeds and things that are inside that. So in the wilds of Africa, a lot of animals will eat this. They'll get moisture out of it. The dung beetles, of course, will roll it up and use it as almost like a home um, for their eggs. And we 
recycle it. We compost it here at the zoo. We'll do another episode on compost for you. Some of you really seem to enjoy that. And how is this made? Well, I'll show you. Megan, bring over the making tool. This is the making tool or a tooth. <laughs> this is a tooth of an elephant. It's one molar, one molar. Look how big it is. I can't see you. The brown line is kind of the gum line. So if you look up in the elephant's mouth, that's what you'd see. The grinding surface, two to 300 pounds of food being eaten a day. Yes, our elephants eat that much, all the hay, some grains, a lot of fruits and vegetables. And this is the root. Amazing things to think about. <laughs> Megan's got all kinds of stuff over there. With our African elephants. Uh, I wanna show you another thing in elephants, so hold on just a sec. Ha! This is kind of fun. Not animals in here, but really a cool program that the North Carolina Zoo is part of. So if you get a chance to visit, and yeah, I know, winter's not everybody's favorite time, but this is open year round. This is the... Elephant Tracking Station. Well done, yes, this is a tracking station. It's in an old kind of Quonset hut, but inside's really cool. Come here, check this out. It's really cool because, dun da 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 there's a helicopter in here. No, it can't fly, there's no rotors. But as you enter the tracking station, over there, it's just information on some ways that we're helping with uh, the elephant uh, human conflict. But over here is the cool thing. Brett, can you show them this? Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance to come, don't go past this, because this is one of our longest research programs that we're part of, one of our longest running conservation efforts. And this is a tracking collar. Uh, you know what we need to do? We need to get Dr. Mentor, we need to get JB in here because this is something he's doing in Cote d'Ivoire. But this is kind of telling you about some of that project that we're being part of. You can read about it and then you can see this huge collar. But yeah, in the elephant tracking station. But So if you get a chance to visit, don't miss it. So we're going to head up here. This is another path that we can leave headed this wait, way. Wait, Megan, what you got? More elephant. The yeah. south yard. Yeah. Let's go. Just testing you. All right. Come on, guys. Let's go see this. Whew. Tell you what. Like a quarter of a brain. Many more brains. Together <laughs> brain. we make one half brain. <laughs> brain pieces. Brain pieces and parts. Yes. Looky, looky, looky. All right. Let's see who's down here. Whew. Artie. Artie? I see. Water. And Water and, and hay. And poo. Brett, can you go find an elephant? Yeah, you just missed him. I just missed him? I was walking backwards. I need to walk forwards. Let's find an elephant. Digital friends, can you find an elephant? Artie. Artie, where are you? Who'd you find? Artie. The rock. It's a big moving rock. <laughs> it's a big moving rock. So this is our south yard. And we'll go show you a picture of Artie in a second again. But we do have two different yards here at the North Carolina Zoo, the south yard and the north yard. Together, a little over, right at seven acres. Um, so the elephants have a pretty long range place to range. You can hear the water. Can you hear the water running over there? The pools are large enough so the elephants can get in and submerge themselves completely underwater. The rocks, they've got places you can rub on, things you can move around. You can see the piles of hay out there. So the keepers do a great job of moving the elephants around to find food. And food isn't all in one location. Really nice space for the elephants we have. Let's go see what we can find already, Brett. Mm -hmm. Let's go over here. Hi, everybody. That's an elephant tushy. <laughs> I bet we can get a better shot. Uh, working with children and elephants, right? And animals, right? Are you going to turn, Artie? Maybe you'll turn. <laughs> oh, Tongan oh, Batir. Oh, right on time. Mommy and daughter. 
Mommy and daughter, yeah. So Batir is closer to you, Tonga further away. And those of you that have been with us for a while, Batir is one of the animals we hope to breed with Louie, who came on a breeding recommendation. We did an episode on Louie and why he's here and what that SSP or Species Survival Program is all about. Well, it's kind of fun. I like them to make an appearance for us. So, part of the North Carolina Zoo's Zoo Adventures Tour, elephants. Uh, hey, let's go see if we can see the uh, Watani grasslands. Oh, yeah. Is that a good idea? That's my favorite spot. Ha-ha. Uh, Brett, yes. what, are you, Brett, what are you showing them? Well, I don't see any elephants in that shot. You can't see? No, what are you showing? I'm gonna come, can I look over your shoulder? Yeah. You don't, you don't see them? What are you looking at? The rhinos back there. Oh. You see them? I do. They look so like this rocks. is a really cool shot. Um, so, we're, so we're at Elephant looking over the Watani grasslands habitat. So are you going to be able to pan out? Look at yeah. Brett. Brett's going to pan yeah. out. And now you can see that space. The space where the rhinos are, where the, um, the oryx are that you're look, looking at over there. That is not connected to the elephant habitat but it's kind of made it look that way. So it's kind of a secretive. But let's, uh, let's see if we can get a little closer shot. All right, cool. I'll follow you. Thanks. Hi. I worked really hard to get out of this egg. You did. I see the <laughs> shell pieces are here. It's a really big egg. <laughs> it's, a really big, it's a Megan-sized egg. Yay. So we've come down the path a little bit. We're on our Shawnee <laughs> loop. We're headed to Watani Grasslands. Um, and we'd really like to show you that. So if you guys don't mind hanging in there, uh, we'll, we'll show you that. So Brett, you ready to go? So we'll catch you in a sec. Uh, what? <laughs> Guys, I, I, I worked really hard to get in here, and and I don't think I'm going to be able to get out. Get, wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, I don't see them. I think they actually left me. I, I wonder what Steve looks like just run like moving his mouth, like without the microphone. Megan? Yeah, there they go. Now they remembered me. Megan. Yay! So, borrow that from you, right? Quick, okay. Break, catch you in a little bit. We'll go back and get her in a little bit. We'll come check this view out. Oh, it's a bird. That's something else that happens here. There's a lot of really cool birds. I survived. She made it. Look at this. Look at this. What an amazing view. So this is the Watani grasslands habitat. 40 acres of space for our rhinos and our antelope. Depends what time of the year you come. Seven or eight different species of, of, of antelope, including gazelles. Our southern white rhinos range across this entire space. You think Megan will forgive us? Yeah, she'll be all right. All right. What do you have? Do you have the oryx in the, in the view in the shot there? Nice. What an amazing space. And if you get to come in the summertime, digital friends, it is just a wash with green. But even now, and we're taping this in December to air and share with you all later on, you can still get the idea of how large Botani grassland space is. It's but, actually sometimes easier to see the animals without all the leaves on the trees. Oh, great point. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if you come here, you might be able to get a, a better look through the, through the branches. And it is a smidge cooler. Mm, that's true. You're trying to get some. Brett is working very hard, digital friends, to try to bring some animals to you from here because they are far away at this space. And they should be, right? This is their home. And they can use the space as they wish. But on this habitat, there are oryx. Uh, you might find kudu. There's two different species of gazelle. We have adra gazelle, beautiful snow white animals, like a rusty red neck. Um, the Thompson's gazelles, kind of the chicken nugget of Africa, because everybody eats them. Little small, three foot, 
three foot ish at the shoulder with that with that kind of rusty red coat and a dark black stripe and other animals you have to come see to believe we hope to see you at the north carolina zoo soon and visit the watani grasslands habitat So for this part of the tour, we thought, you know what? We were going to show you elephants. Did that, going to show you what tiny grasslands. That was cool. And then we were going to go, go drive somewhere else. And then boom, lo and behold, we saw this. This is our zebra ostrich giraffe habitat. A little bit of zoo lingo. This is our zog habitat. <clears throat> yeah, maybe not so creative, but it's what we got. It's our zebra, ostrich, and giraffe. And the habitat is really cool. And these three animals are put together on purpose. You have the zebra. They're grazing from the grasses. They're eating the grasses. So in the community, that's fine. You have ostriches, which are doing a little bit of both and also a little bit of omnivore in there. Um, so they work just fine with the zebra. And then you add in the majestic giraffe. 17, 18 feet tall. They're eating much higher. <clears throat> so in the zoo community, in this habitat, you can put all these animals together no crazy competition. We do have a giraffe deck here, and if the giraffe are cooperating, and when it's open during the season, you get the chance to feed the giraffe. A lot of ifs and whens in there, but everything is on the animal's control, right? If they want to come up to the feeding to the deck to be fed, they can choose to do that. If not, say la vie. That I think that you see walking to the right there in the shot. That's Amelia. Shout out to my niece, just because I can do that. <laughs> um, that's Amelia. She's a young three-year-old giraffe. She came in relatively recently to the zoo. And up there on the left-hand side, that looks like Leah. Yeah, our other female. The two males aren't out and about. Maybe they're working with them. Maybe doing some training in the back area. Never can tell. This habitat, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three to four acres in size. So if you come, there's four overlooks. So you have to be patient and you've got to look for them. Remember, the zoo is all about the animals, giving the animals choice and control over their space, where they want to be, who they want to hang out with. But having the four overlooks gives you a great opportunity to spot them and to find them. Let's tell you a little bit about the species in general. There in the middle, that's the zebra. That was really cool, cryptic, not cryptic camouflage, but more of a, a disruptive camouflage, kind of hard to see them. Cryptic in a way, I guess, because if they're in the grasses, they're all together. It's kind of hard to find one animal. Herbivores, you can see those big old bellies digesting the grasses that they're eating, some of the leaves they might be munching on. Black with white stripes is the current run with that. And those stripes provide all kinds of advantages. Breaks up the size of the body. It actually, solids are much more attracting to the bugs and insects. So that being broken up like that might also provide a little bit of bug repellent. And get this, there's some thought that where the black and the white kind of come together it actually might have a little bit of cooling effect on the zebras. The giraffe, imagine being, a, being 18, 17, 19 feet tall. Huge advantage if you're looking for a food source. Huge advantage looking for a food source. Nobody else can get there. Nobody else can get to the food source that you can get to. Major advantage. And now you can also scope the entire plains looking for danger, looking for threats. But don't let that size fool you. They can run. And they run in kind of a weird loping pattern, but it's really kind of cool. Oh, look at this. Hey, Brett, I'm going to challenge you. Mm. Look to the left, looking over the, 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 the trees, the, the rocks. Can oh, you see yeah. Turbo up there? <laughs> What a fun shot. There's Turbo. Digital friends, use those amazing observation skills that you have. Can you see the two little spots on Turbo's neck? Mm -hmm. If he raises his head up a little, oh, you can see them? Yeah, you can see them. Yeah. 
Those help identify Turbo. Almost looks like he's been bitten by a vampire. That's one way you can tell Turbo when you come to the North Carolina Zoo. We have another, I don't know where Jack is. We have another one in there. Is he over there too? I see a really like long tree something. Wait, no, maybe that's not Lee. Oh, you are right, Megan. Great spot. We only have to walk up and get a good shot of Jack. And then of course there's the ostrich out there. She's walking away from us at this point, but I'll tell you what, we've got a couple minutes. Brett, come with me. This is so cool. So we'll take a little bit of a walk. Brett's like, are you going to be okay? <laughs> so, yeah, right. So, again, we mentioned there's different overlooks here. So we're going to climb this small little, this little small little grade to one of our other overlooks because I think we're going to have a really cool spot one of our other giraffes. Why don't you walk forward? Why don't you walk forward? Yes, please. Get a cool spot. I might what? A cool spot. What if I walk sideways? Come with me. Ah, that was funny. That yes. was funny. I'm just walk forward. Let's just walk forward. Let's let's put You're Megan. Me let's put Megan back in the egg. <laughs> what? Oh. All right, you can stay with us. <laughs> so here's our over other overlook. Some of our art. Nice little statuette of a giraffe there. And look at this shot. So you can see we didn't walk very far. And look at the entire a new view of the habitat. And that big boy looking at you right now is Jack. A little bit of a different color phase. That's Jack. He's looking at you all, digital friends, during your tour of Africa here at the North Carolina Zoo. Turbo to the left. Jack just staring at you. Who brought the food, Jack's asking. Jack's thing. Do you know how tall Jack is, Megan? 17? 17. That's what I was thinking. A great example of enrichment. Enrichment once again. I bet you all could put the definition of enrichment in, in, the, in there by now, couldn't you? The definition of enrichment, trying to enhance or elicit those natural type of behaviors, challenging them mentally, challenging them physically, to do the same types of things they would do in their wild homes. What a great shot of the North Carolina Zoo's Zog habitat, zebra, ostrich, and giraffe. So how was that, friends? I hope you enjoyed this tour of Africa, or at least part of it here at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina. We're very happy you tuned in today for this zoo adventures, kind of a neat little way as the temperatures are going down, still bringing you the zoo. Some people might want to come when it's cold. Others are like, nah, I'll wait a little bit longer. We still wanted to share the zoo with you if you'd like to come out. And how neat was it to see the elephants? Um, we saw Watani grasslands. How about this shot? Oh, and don't forget the eggs. Poor Megan, but she was a great trooper, a great hatchling, she says from a distance. Digital friends, we have to bring you some more of these tours. Um, do me a favor, hang tight, stay tuned, and we'd love to see you, and do be safe. Bye, y'all.